Hello everyone and welcome back to my hard time series in Kerbal Space Program 0.25. In this episode I want to start off with bringing our little Jewel Clipper 2 back. It is currently orbiting BOP and it's got plenty of science on board and I want to see if we can retrieve it. Remember the issue is whether we have enough fuel to actually bring it back to Kerbin and if we can't we'll have to transmit the data instead but I do want to get this data back so I've uh, time warped uh, to where Kerbin is a little bit behind where it needs to be for our transfer but uh, that's because we need to get this thing out of Bob's orbit and back into back into Jules orbit uh, the angle is supposed to be Kerbin is supposed to be uh, 48 degrees behind Joule so I've got it uh, more like 50 to 55 ish so that's the situation and now we need to boost this out so that we can get into orbit around Joule probably well which way are we going around this okay yeah so we can create a maneuver here let's see how that works out yeah I don't want to do too much to change our orbit that's already quite a lot of Delta V can we reduce that and still get into orbit okay looks like uh, about 60 minimum. Well, no, I think we can do better than that. Line it up properly. Again, the name of the game is to conserve as much fuel as possible so that we can try and get back. Okay, so 48 minutes. And then after this, I have, uh, hopefully we'll have enough science to unlock the technology I need for my special, the thing I want to do with the Derek. Oh, I should have got, I didn't change the camera though. But yeah, we're, we're on our way out. Okay, let's do this. Okay, now how much will it cost to get back home? We're going to have to orient this way. Oh, we're pretty much where we need to be to burn out, I think. Okay, we're at a good place though, uh, the descending node and the ascending node like that, so it probably won't have to correct our inclination. Ooh, but uh, timing is a bit off right now. Again, uh, we, we have to wait a little while for Kerbin to get into the right location. By that point, maybe we'll be alright. 1500 Delta V. Okay, let's see if this guy has that kind of Delta V. Okay, I've, I get that we have 1933 meters per second of Delta V. So we have enough. So 1,933, but uh, we barely have enough, I would say, uh, given that we might be... I mean, this is going to be a finicky sort of thing, and we need to time warp right now. Okay, I'm not going to try and fiddle around with it right now. That's uh, good enough for me as far as that's concerned. It's going to be tough, though. With only, because we're going to be 30,000 kilometers away from Kerbin. And we only have 400 meters per second to get in nice and close to aerobrake. But let's do this. So here we go, trying to bring this guy back home and get it science. If we can get it science, then. I think we can unlock at least uh, what I need is the big reaction wheels because uh oh oh uh, I need to transfer fuel so actually let's uh, throttle down while I do that so let's get into interplanetary space first and then I'll see what I can do otherwise we'll have to do it in Kerbin SOI
Okay, I think that's close enough. Let's try and uh, correct our situation. I'll just do it from the screen because I, I don't think what I've got plotted is technically the best thing possible. So, I need to take a look. Okay, there we go. Curve and periapsis 30.8 kilometers. That will do fine. Okay, let us bring it in. Looks like we had plenty of fuel to spare, actually. Okay, here we are. Actually, the orbit's not that bad. I think, I, of course, I'm going to want to head in straight down. So... That's enough. 25 kilometers will definitely capture us and, and bring us down. So, okay. Okay, we have capture. Camera change. Still going down. And that probably means we're headed for the surface with that camera change. Oh, actual orbit was a little bit delayed. Actually, we're not too far away from uh, KSC. Look, KSC's right there. Not far at all. I mean, of course, not within my desired 10 kilometer radius, but you can't have everything. At least we're on the same side of the planet. I'm going to deploy the parachute first and then decide where to separate the service module. Can't really see what terrain we're over, whether it's mountains or not. Okay, deploying parachute. I think. There we go. Okay, I, I see the terrain, sort of. Looks like a pond of some kind. About sea level, yeah. Uh, looks like deserty area with a little bit of water in. Oasis, if you will. Okay. Wow. That was a loud splash. Okay, let's recover vessel. Alright, so we got the service module with us. And since we were close to KSC, that was probably worth it. Okay, so uh, we boosted our science by the tune of 252 by bringing that back. Most of it, uh, it looks like the only thing was the material study, but that's 180 science, so that's worthwhile. And of course, we got the recovery of vessel, return from the surface of Paul. I, I, I know we did both Paul and Bob with this, but uh, I guess Bob doesn't matter. Anyway, um, or did, did we land on Bob? Yeah, we did land on Bob, I thought. Anyway, uh, right, uh, wasn't the, yeah, Science Junior was from Bob's surface. Okay, anyway, and we got about 12,000 funds back from that, 88.8%. All right, uh, let's look at the tech tree. Okay, so here we see, what I want was, what I wanted was the big reaction wheels, actually. Let's see, this, here we go. All right, research that and specifically unlock that. Let's get the big capsule and the lander can and mod propellant engine, shear, burner engine. Uh, what, what's that? Oh yeah, uh, cylinderified mod propellant tank. Yeah, parachute, shear. Okay, um, we have enough for one more of these this level. We could have the big lander legs, the claw, or crew tank and docking port. That's that's a tough call between those possibilities. I'm going to leave that for now. Can't quite decide between those those possibilities and we don't need those for what I'm about to do. So, let's go to VAB. Actually, cancel that. I have decided I need these landing struts. Without those, we can't make things that uh, come back down, large things that come back down safely. Uh, you'll see what I mean. Okay, back to the VAB. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I've unlocked a bunch of parts. Uh, for instance, this adapter, most of the 3.75 meter parts, um, obviously the lander legs I just got, the 
um, what you got reaction wheel we got and uh, yeah and this little uh, adapter here but yeah uh, this is the Derek shuttle yes I have decided uh, this is <laughs> this is not the most elegant thing it's it is a brute force method to create a space shuttle and um, yeah uh, meaning that I didn't want to do a whole lot of testing where things exploded so I just made sure that I had a huge amount of the mass on this side and of course the vast majority of the thrust on this side and I've action grouped it now the Derek should already had its own action groups for instance for the air intakes and the engines the action groups are for these engines down here and number nine turns on and off this engine and number ten turns on and off the outer engines. Um, the The beauty of this is that it is a, f or meant to be, a fully reusable shuttle system. All of the boosters come back down, they all get get into orbit. Everything gets brought into orbit. None of this uh, detaches prior to orbit. Uh, it all gets into orbit and then everything separates. The shuttle, none of its fuel gets used during launch. Uh, its fuel tanks are shut off right now and what happens is that fuel gets uh, transferred from this center one to the shuttle and then from the outer boosters into the center okay and so that's the layout but even if the outer boosters have their fuel expended they remain with the system all the way to orbit so that we can bring them down safely you will note that there are small tanks up here they are shut off that is because they are the reserve fuel for deorbiting these big boosters and so we're going to need to bring these down to the KSC and when I, when I say that I mean we need to bring them down to the grounds of the KSC otherwise the land will not be level enough for them to stay upright so there's a lot going on here and of course we'll have to bring all three of them down it, once I demonstrate that it's possible to do so I'll probably leave them up there until I get a convenient time. I won't be showing all these booster returns uh, when we uh, do missions because they'll be uh, too cumbersome. They're a little bit off level. Oh, sorry about that for those who might be picky about it. Anyway, uh, and it's because that I might be leaving them in orbit for a while before bringing them back down that I put solar panels on. Uh, just these uh, little ones and not the, not the extendable ones. Hopefully that'll be enough. Okay. And of course, if it's not enough, we'll just unlock the claw and uh, deal with it like that. And so the benefit of this, of course, is that the, the Derek does not have to use any of its fuel in order to get into orbit. And then once in orbit, it can uh, proceed to other locations, for instance, Lathe, perhaps, and conduct operations there, or, or uh, even Duna, and uh, maybe even uh, launch a probe. Um, uh, somebody had asked how much Delta V this has, and I ended up underestimating it. I actually accidentally uh, only got two-thirds of the fuel into the equation. So let me do that again now, trying to figure out how much Delta V this has, just in just in the uh, LFO tanks, the liquid fuel oxidizer tanks, and uh, not in the, not in the, what you call it, uh, liquid fuel jet mode tanks. So let's see now. Okay, I think this, uh, the Derek has about 3,300 meters per second of delta V. Uh, that's what I would estimate, uh, depending on the payload, of course. So that's the situation with that. Uh, these things have an obscene amount of parachutes, as you can see, so hopefully that will be worthwhile. Uh, without further ado, let's, uh, let's take it out to launch pad. Oh, wait, let's uh, pick our crew, right? Well, for this, uh, Jeb and Bill... I guess this is their time, right? This is gonna be interesting. Okay. Yep. Uh, let's let's take it out to the launch pad. Uh, I don't know if this is well. Uh, just now it uh, went into physics mode, and the uh, the launch clamp was actually flexing. That might be a problem. Uh, but uh, let's time warp to daylight here. Okay. I think we're all good. So it probably goes without saying, I built this in sandbox, so I knew which, uh, let's turn off the air intakes, so I knew which parts I would need in order to uh, build this. I knew the math already. Remember, in uh, in my .24 series, the Efficient Design series, I've been bringing these boosters back. I've actually been doing 
uh, single stage to orbit systems pretty much all the way. And so I knew the ratio of how much um, payload they could bring up uh, with uh, given a certain amount of uh, fuel and thrust. Right, so I've got those numbers down. So I knew that I would need all of this uh, going on here. I, did, I have already done some basic testing just to make sure that uh, things don't break apart. So uh, Jim and Bill, I, I trust that they'll be safe because of that. But that does not mean that this mission will be a complete success. We have a lot to work out just yet. For instance, when I need to switch off various engines. Again, I'm using brute force. So um, it's just a matter of managing thrust and that should be enough to keep this going. And I, I know enough about space shuttle stuff. I've done, if you look through my previous videos, I've done space shuttle stuff before. So uh, I know how this goes, hopefully. All right, uh, things are a bit tight though. The key, the, the one thing I was really testing for is making sure this goes up straight. Uh, very important and I think uh, we've got that down all right Jeb and Bill all right here we go all right looks good overheating in the rapiers is standard I'm going for a roll program Okay, roll program complete. Okay, looking good. So the trick here is you'll notice eventually that my pitch input will be getting more and more extreme. And at that point I need to switch how the thrust is going. You can see it's already adjusting pitch down in order to keep things steady. Now I'm going to start doing the pitch program here. Okay, the pitch is getting pretty extreme to uh, keep this balance. I'll keep an eye on that. Yeah, look at it. Uh, it's uh, starting to get close to the bottom end there. Up, oh, that's bottom end. Uh, I've got to feel it out for a sec here. Uh, okay. Alright, I'm going to switch off the center, so the center uh, engines are off. The side boosters were feeding into the center, but now they're just feeding themselves, and, and the rapiers actually, they're still feeding the rapiers. Try to keep this on probe grade here, most efficient way to go. Now as the outer boosters run out of fuel, we're going to have to relight the center and then the pitch issue is going to become pretty severe for me. Okay, pull up, pull up, pull up. You can see I'm pulling up all the way here trying to keep this safe. can't dip down too much either because otherwise we're not going to gain altitude. Need to keep above above 30 so I'm going to lose the prograde vector here. This would definitely not be safe in far. pretty extreme here. Uh, with, uh, with me trying to control pitch all the way, it's tough to get the roll and yaw right. Okay, it's a little bit more stable now. I've got a little bit more pitch authority. 
still keeping the angle above 30 because we're still like below 30 kilometers here. Now it's just a matter of whether my delta V numbers check out. If they don't, we can just dump the boosters and uh, get the get the shuttle into orbit. Uh, Derek will be able to get into orbit on its own. It's still got its own fuel. But I would rather see this all get into orbit together. It's pretty costly after all. That's a good point, by the way. We do have a budget, right? This is a very expensive craft. We do want to see all of this come back down together. And it's the, it's the coming back down thing that's got to be tricky, because I have never landed any boosters of this size. I've got the reserve fuel, but it's not much. Definitely do not want to hit the ocean with these things. Let's see, what's, what's this, what's going on here? Got more or less stable now. Uh, well, okay, a little bit of a pitch problem. How far are we from apoapsis? Okay, that's not too bad. Looks pretty stable to me. Looks good. Obviously, I matched the center of mass and center of thrust uh, based on. It's not a whole thing. Uh, whenever you're making a space shuttle, try your best to move the center of mass high and keep it high. As the fuel drains, your center of mass is going to tend towards the engines. And so that was the benefit of putting these reverse, uh, reserve tanks up top here. The benefit was that I got to push my, my center of mass high and keep it high because it's got all that fuel up top there and that helps keep the balance that's very important okay it looks like we can uh, get a decent apoapsis but I'll need to still have fuel to circularize at 80 kilometers 80 kilometers is probably the best that this thing can do I don't think I'm I'm gonna be happy with trying to bring it any higher than that maybe a hundred kilometers would be fine how much fuel do we have left it's all about the fuel in the center tank uh, yeah, I'd, I'd say not much, f no, we've got that whole tank there. Uh, that's not too bad. But let's, let's keep it to 80. Now, of course, if I could mount the engines, I mean, the problem is the, the Derek would not have been an independent vehicle if I had to tilt the engines, but... Of course, tilting the engines the way the shuttle has them tilted is not really an option for our part clipping in uh, in, in uh, stock KSP. Or at least, uh, well, I guess you could mount them on one of those uh, strut segments. I guess those work. I don't know. I haven't uh, bothered with that. I watch uh, EJ's stream on Twitch. And, of course, his shuttle is way, way, way beyond this stuff. Um, so, yeah. That's 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 a different world. Uh, that's uh, totally different from what I do from day to day. So it's interesting to watch. Okay, here we go for orbit. Okay, that looks like uh, that's 83 by 78, plus 79 there. Okay, and we have some fuel left over in the center, so we can carry a payload, obviously. Uh, right now the payload bay is empty, but I think uh, that uh, fuel signifies that we can bring a payload up with us. That's very important, obviously. Now, uh, my specialty in this, I, very rarely do I get separations wrong, so I'm I'm interested to see whether I've got that right here. Let's see. Uh, the first thing that should happen is that the side boosters will separate. They've got their reserve fuel and everything, but they're otherwise empty. Let's see. Should be interesting. Do I want to do this? Yeah, okay. Uh, 
Okay, very nice. Now, in theory, with the remaining fuel in this, this could boost the shuttle on its own to a higher orbit, if necessary. But for now, we're going to keep the the shuttle in two in this low orbit. So let us let's just decouple it, I suppose. Let's take a good look at that. Make sure that the little boosters. You can see I've uh, tilted the boosters out to make sure that they don't actually burn the shuttle at all. Let's see how that looks. Okay, very good. Separation complete. Shuttle is in orbit. Now I have three tries to figure out how to get these boosters down, right? We'll see what kind of percentage chance of recovery I've got on these things. Let's go to free camera here. I think the shuttle, the real shuttle, actually faces down on the daylight side to protect the cargo bay from solar radiation and uh, just use the bottom of the shuttle to to keep it safe from radiation. I haven't actually landed this shuttle with a full load of fuel, have I? That's sort of important. Uh, yeah, I don't know how good it is with Maybe we should send it over to somewhere and get some science before coming back. Probably a good idea. So that's going to be the plan for Jeb and Bill. They're going to head out somewhere, get some science before returning to Kerbin. And that's going to be the mission for this shuttle. Our focus now is to spring some of these back. This one is one of the side boosters. It doesn't have the extra fuel that the center booster has. So we'll start with this. Actually, maybe we should start with the center booster since it's the heaviest, but also has the largest margin. So, first thing to do is to pump the fuel from the top to the bottom. Oh, well, not necessarily the bottom. We can uh, go to this tank since the bottom doesn't have quite as much space as it needs. Okay, now of course you want to shift the fuel from the bottom instead of unlocking this tank because you need the center of mass way low now so that it can maintain stability, right? Okay, now what we want to do is at 35 kilometers above the above the peninsula there. That's what I checked out. Uh, again, this is from my my 0.24 elegant design series. I've been doing testing of this sort in that series to figure out exactly what altitudes I want for returning these sorts of things. Okay, I think that'll do for me. So this is why we needed those uh, large reaction wheels, because without those, it'll be cumbersome to turn this. Oh, you can sort of see the shuttle flying by there, actually. That's sort of neat. We should be pretty much dead on in terms of inclination, it looks like. So, no worry about that. Let's just do this deorbit burn now. Are we too early? Ah, yeah, we are too early. Okay. Just a little adjustment there. Okay. Okay, so 34.5 is what I'm going to aim for here. Looks like the KSE is in daylight, so that's good. Let's let's go for it. Now I don't want to deviate too much from retrograde vector, otherwise it's going to take a while to turn this thing around. And we've already hit the atmosphere there. So let's make sure we retrograde. Okay, so as usual my benchmark is I want to hit the shore at 34 kilometers. Okay, looks like we're right on it. Good. Okay. Looking pretty good. Here's flame effects. Okay, within 100 kilometers now. Now the main thing is we want to 
touched on on the land side, but also nowhere with the slope. So uh, this has to be pretty good. But this is looking much better than I thought the first try would be. Again, if you're wondering how I can aim it even this well, take a look at the 0.24 stock series. Uh, that's basically a large part of what I've been doing there. But I think we're going to fall a little bit short. Maybe if I wait a little while before pulling the parachutes, it'll be better. Okay, we're below Mach 1. I don't think I got to get too much closer than this. Okay, parachute time. Okay, the other thing was if the parachutes were going to rip anything up, and it doesn't look like it. Looks like we've got that much down. SAS off, gear down. You can see how puny the landing gear is. Okay, with it off, oh, nine meters per second, ouch. Just hoping for a little bit better than that. But let's not risk any funds here. I'm going to slow it down to perhaps four meters per second. But we don't have to do that until we're closer to the surface. Now obviously the touchdown with the other boosters is not going to be as soft as this because they don't have as much fuel to use on the on the descent. But on the other hand they're also lighter. Uh, okay, oh uh, no 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 please uh, let me recover. Okay, well. <laughs> okay, well we, we got to recover vessel before it decided to destroy us. Let's see. Okay, 97.4%, 108,000 funds, which gives you an idea. Each of those boosters, 100,000 funds. We need those back. I don't care if I... I need to rush towards uh, recover vessel. Okay, let's try one of the side boosters this time. Now, on the last one, we did 34.5 or 6-ish. Uh, let's try 34.7 with this one. Looks like we're still all in daylight, so that's good. Gonna plot it. Okay, uh, 30. Okay, that's close to what I wanted. 34.7 was what I said. Okay, let's uh, get to the point where we're hitting the atmosphere and then I'll turn to the correct vector. Okay, there we are. So uh, you can see we still have 311 liquid fuel out of the 360 that we had in reserve, so we do have some buffer here. Still, I don't think this shuttle is going to be launching into uh, into any sort of odd inclination. Uh, this this system does not have enough room for that. Uh, the derrick itself will have to adjust its inclination once it's in orbit if it wants to get to anything like that. So no launching into polar orbit, I don't think that's not going to be possible. Okay, here we go. Checking this out. It looks like we're going to be approaching high, er, at least. Yeah. So let's use a little bit of thrust to retro burn here. Don't know about how much, but let's say about there. One thing I don't want to do is hit the water, of course. We can also uh, deploy the parachutes earlier than we did with the last one. And uh, others will tell me that I can use all sorts of aerodynamic stuff, but the problem is we're still in testing mode. So I actually want uh, somewhat uh, more direct numbers on this stuff right now than uh, what we might get with uh, deflecting it too much.
limit how many variables you're changing at any given time. Right now I don't even want to release the parachutes earlier. Let's see if this is enough. Yeah, I think it might be. Okay, uh, certainly don't want this to be like a missile head for our facilities, but I think we'll be all right. Oh, darn. There's a hill here. I'm trying to get away from that, but I don't think I can. All right, parachute deployment. Oh no! It looks like looks like we are on the on the KSC grounds. Hopefully, it's as flat as I hope it is. Tough to see from that angle. Gear down. Seven point three. Once we get within a hundred meters, I'll use some engine power to slow us down. Just gonna get to five meters per second this time. Uh, the it's not letting me recover. 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 Ah, ah, ah. Ah! Oh! 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 Well, we lost a tank, but we've got the top probe. Let's recover that, and then we'll recover this and tally it up and see how much we got. So I think four meters per second is safe. Now we got fifty-five thousand funds from that. Where did where did? Oh well, no, it uh, actually uh, returned the. The lower portion, that's why, because uh, we've got the engine cluster. Very important, the engine cluster. And so we, we got about half of uh, the funds back. Let's get the other portion and see how much we really got in total. Remember, the maximum amount is about 108,000. This one, let's recover. Oh, that's only 6,000. Okay, so about 60% of the total amount we got back. Let's try the last one. So I'm sorry for uh, obviously basically doing the same thing three times but well, we, we are testing something here and so far we've got a 80 percent recovery rate so that's an important statistic that we're going to be using for assessing the cost-benefit analysis for these these shuttle missions right We have been landing somewhat short, after all. We could use the parachutes to give us extra drag. Well, not no, we weren't short last time, actually. That's not true. We uh, we actually had to use some... Ah, oh, that's too much. We had to use some thrust in order to slow down. Maybe, maybe it is good enough. Uh, instead of spinning around and around here with this. Trying to get the right number. Not even sure what the right number might be. I know the ballpark, but every orbit is different. Okay, we'll go with that. Yep, we we're higher than last time. Let's correct that. Hopefully that will be enough. We can target the landing beacon. And we're gonna have to touch down at about around four meters per second this time. Five was clearly too much. Or at least uh, I wasn't get able to get to recover vessel in time to save the darn thing, so. After this, uh, I, I won't necessarily deorbit them immediately, like I said. So what's going to happen is I'll deorbit them when I need funds. So 
it'll be sort of a orbiting bank of funds and then I can deorbit them whenever I need the cash. It's sort of the idea. I mean right now well it's not even showing how many how much funds I have. I hope they fix that. I think we're going a little bit too far, aren't we? Okay, early parachute deployment, I think. Oh dear, I think we're going to have to find out whether we're going to be able to recover this in water. Well, I guess that is something that I was bound to test at some point. Okay, full parachute deployment, 7.6 meters per second, have to conserve fuel. I'm going to try and land it as softly as I can, but it's going to flop anyway. The key is whether I can hit recover vessel before it flops. Ah, if only, if only SpaceX was able to do this with the Falcon. Time the, the recovery so that it doesn't flop in the water. I'm sure it would have been much easier for them. Okay, recover vessel. Aha, I beat it. Obviously, it would have gotten destroyed if it flopped down, but I don't know to what extent. So, tentatively speaking, we've got, uh, well, let's see what it says. Okay, 207,000 uh, funds there. So, tentatively speaking, we're talking about 90% uh, recovery rate altogether, but sort of touchy. Uh, definitely a benefit if you touch down less than 4 meters per second. Seems like the recover vessel button is more likely to show up before you flop. Uh, I would prefer not to have to rush before I flop. I would prefer to land on a runway, but that would probably mean reserving much more fuel than I'm doing right now. So we've got a tight margin situation and it'll, we'll, we'll, we'll see. Now obviously we won't be using this system for everything. Uh, the uh, larger payloads will just launch normally and well we, we might use one of the boosters as a recoverable launch system for instance or maybe all three as a recoverable launch system for some payloads but it might be more efficient just to launch things in a, on a more normal rocket and of course uh, the Derek shuttle will be a special purpose I don't know uh, we might want to just refuel the Derek in orbit now and have it do various missions. I'll see what I want to do with that. Of course uh, Jeb and Bill are in orbit right now and I'll have to take a look at our contracts and see what we can do with them. But uh, yeah, so uh, uh, certainly a successful mission in terms of getting the shuttle into orbit and uh, with with the entire system getting it all into orbit. Uh, we know that, that the Derek can land. We've done that before. So that's that's pretty. Uh, uh, so we're comfortable with that. Landing the boosters was sort of an iffier proposition, but we got most of our funds back, uh, the vast majority of our funds back, uh, with with a little uh, judicious rush to the recover vessel button. So uh, that's the state of things. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did enjoy this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments and suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.